Okay, then let's continue our explorations of the magic behind DCM and the free energy principle. Actually, are there any immediate reactions to the questions and answer pool that I sent you? Was there anything that you no, but you all got it and you're all happy. Good. Um, so we have introduced our model and let us write it up again. Um, and our variational distribution. These are of course all definitions, so we choose them because we want to. And we now said that we can um, plug all this in into the definition of the variational free energy, which is the same, of course, definition as we uh, have seen it from the very beginning when we discussed the basic um, foundations of variational inference. So we can plug this in and evaluate this integral. And um, what we get from that is the following function. So this fun um, we view what we get uh, from this as a function of the variational parameters, of course, because this is what we're trying to um, optimize, so these parameters. And uh, what it returns is, of course, a single number, the free energy, or the um, evidence lower bound, which is a single number. And um, yeah, we put in the variational expectation parameter mx and the variational covariance uh, parameter sx and by um, analytically evaluating the integral so this thing here after substitution we get the following and i'm just writing it up this Whether it was a good idea to write this up, I don't know. Um, we could also look at it in the script, but uh, there are a couple of things that are noteworthy, and we should discuss about this. Um, I'm not sure that writing it up now is very helpful. But now that I started, I want to finish it. Almost there. This is 
uh, so it's a little bit longish, but then also not really. Um, so first of all, you should when when you see this now. Um, realize that uh, we actually know most things that we uh, find in here. So for example, there's n, that's the number of um, data points, ln 2 pi, so logarithm of 2 pi is always the same. Then we have the lambda y in here, which is our um, uh, variance parameter for the data. Um, importantly, we have um, this term here which um, measures the discrepancy between the data and the prediction of our nonlinear function f for the variational parameter. So this is um, a typical thing that you are very familiar with, also of course from the um, GLM theory. So that's kind of the, um, yeah, this is the prediction of the model for a given parameter setting. This is the observed data. Um, the difference between them is if you want a prediction error, and um, this is uh, squared and uh, summed over all data points. Um, so that is um, yeah, essentially a measure of the goodness of fit, uh, sometimes referred to as accuracy. So if the prediction of the model, so fmx, is very similar to y, then this accuracy um, is um, very uh, high. Um, or the prediction error is very low. So this is actually, if you um, look uh, at the function up to here, this is f uh, essentially just the common uh, log likelihood function for Gaussian models. There are additional things in here, and um, let's first have a look here. So m is the number of parameters. Um, there is um, uh, the um, covariance matrix of the parameters, so the um, prior covariance matrix plays a role. And then there is this term, which is not quite right here, um, because it's again just an um, error term, but I miss some part here. Sorry. Uh, this needs an M x minus mu x um, and then minus one half trace sigma x minus one s x so this part here measures um, the deviation of the variational parameter from the prior parameter yeah mu x was the uh, prior uh, prior expectation parameter for the parameters, so the unobserved random variables, and mx is the variational parameter. So um, this um, um, function also penalizes um, large deviations from the prior, which is sometimes, and that's, I have some issues with calling this complexity, but I'm calling it complexity here because a lot of people call it complexity. Um, so what is penalized here is a, devia a strong deviation from um, the prior. So um, the model tries to, or the, the variational free energy function tries to keep the, um, the variational distribution as close to the prior as possible. Um, then there is um, this term here, um, which relates actually together with this term, but this is not really a function of the um, variational parameter. This relates to the entropy or the variance of the, um, and entropy you can just view as the variance because as you see it's just a function of the covariance, um, um, of the variational distribution. And um, what this is trying to achieve is to um, to maximize the um, yeah um, because it's positive. It tries to maximize the um, um, variance of the variational distribution. So basically, to um, keep the uncertainty as high as possible um, while minimizing the um, 
deviation of the prediction from the data and um, the deviation of the prior um, from um, the variation and expectation parameter. Um, so these are things about this function that one can intuitively understand. I have to say, although I'm saying these things here, um, the mathematical analysis of these variation free energy or elbow functions is not very far. Uh, so you often find in the neuroimaging literature, you find things like this is complexity and this is accuracy, and then somebody writes it who is some postdoc who really doesn't know what they're writing, but they uh, were told that they are supposed to write this now, and then they write it. It's, um, I think, um, there should so one there's definitely a lot of um, work that can be done in understanding these functions better than is currently done and also if you say complexity and so you sometimes see these people from London who just say and this is the complexity and this is this and this is this as if this is somewhat clear it's not clear and one should not uh, um, just because people are uh, communicating in this way so um, just uh, take it as granted so um, there is and um, there's still a lot of room for understanding actually these functions. We went, uh, we did a little bit of that um, in terms of uh, trying to what these functions mean um, in this uh, 2017 paper for GLMs, but essentially this is as far as I got with this whole thing of understanding these functions. Um, since then I've been trying to finish the projects of all these PhD students and master students who always get their project to a certain degree, but then they it's too much um, and then I have to take over and um, uh, finish that so um, there is more that can be done in terms of understanding these functions what is really not well understood from my perspective uh, is the meaning of these terms here um, so the Jacobian and um, the um, um, traces that's this other trace term here um, so the the where they come in is actually um, specifically the Jacobian terms come in when the nonlinear function f needs to be approximated to be able to compute these integrals. Um, so the Jacobian um, is, if you want, the first um, derivative of a um, multivariate vector valued functions function so um, let's briefly put in the in Jacobian here um, so if you have a function that maps m-dimensional uh, vectors onto n-dimensional outcomes then what this uh, corresponds to is um, some input vector with m entries being mapped to an output and um, of course there are n outputs which are can be written as these n component functions so this is just what's behind a multivariate vector valued function because each of the n outputs of this function can depend on or potentially depend on all inputs don't have to but potentially can and um, the um, Jacobian matrix um, which I denote by J F here allocates to each input vector so to each X the matrix of the first partial derivative um, of all um, need more space of all component functions. So it includes the partial derivative with respect to the first variable of the first. Uh, component function, the partial derivative with respect to the second input of the first component function, and so on up to the nth of the first. And then it does this for all component functions 
Um, oops, this is wrong. Ooh, doing, am I doing it the whole thing wrong? I need to look it up. I don't want to do it wrong. Uh, it's I think it's the other way around, right? So you, do you have my um, question thing with you? It needs to be n times n, right? Mm. So this is an M by M matrix. So this is M by M, so it needs to be M needs to be M in this direction. Um, In the first row, the facts are all to the index 1, and in the last row, the facts have the index n. Well, interesting. So it's either or. <laughs> um, uh, One no. changes in that direction the index of the x. Let's have a look how I do it um, here. Um, the important thing is this, uh, this, so, M, yeah, no, uh, wait, M, oh, let's just look at Wikipedia, it needs to be M, it, because it needs to be multiplied with the um, um, input, Vector and hence it needs to be m dimensional in this direction. So it should be uh, x1 to xm of f1. Um, but this, um, of course, can always go back and forth. Now this is wrong, I think. These are the questions, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's also like this in the script and the calculus. No, I guess that's where I got it from. Um, Yeah. Um, so <laughs> the problem is, of course, uh, how you exactly do it. So this is, goes from n to m, and then uh, it has uh, the n here. So ah, yeah, now I see it. Uh, <laughs> and this is also how I did it there. No, <sighs> this is just annoying. Um, this also has nothing to do with math. So you're not good in math if you can do these things because these are these plus and minus things that are just annoying. So um, the confusion arises from the fact that in um, the um, handout and maybe also in the calculus, this is a function from n to m, rn to rm, um, which I think I'm using there because I'm starting out with a n-dimensional function from an n-dimensional space to R. Um, you could have uh, from n-dimensional space to uh, the Jacobian matrix maps from an n-dimensional space to an n times n 
Um, no, I mean the function, so the Jacobian matrix is the first derivative of a multivariate vector valued function. And um, the question is, what is this function? And in the calculus section and also here in your uh, Q&A, um, this is a function that goes from N to M, so from North Pole to Maria. For, the, uh, for what we are looking at here, it actually goes from M to N, so from Maria to North Pole. And why does it do that? Because N uh, is um, what I use as a convention for the number of data parts. And hence, uh, it's uh, the other way around here. And this is where the confusion, my own, and then, of course, also your, yours that I induce um, comes from. So, um, everything was... Uh, Fine, so um, this goes to M in contrast to what's happening in the calculus uh, thing because uh, this is this is what we are dealing with uh, currently and this is what uh, happens in the calculus uh, section. So the important thing is uh, just that uh, um, besides this M and N madness, the important thing is that um, it's all the first derivatives with uh, partial derivatives with respect to all input uh, um, variables um, uh, of all um, output functions. Yeah? So you have n functions, output functions, um, multivariate real valued uh, output functions, and you have um, n input variables or n input variables and you need to do all partial derivatives of all output functions and whether uh, this is then n times m or m times n depends on what your function is um, so that would be fn x and that would be partial x m f yeah. So that's the Jacobian. Always a great source for confusion, whether it's m times n or n by n. Um, but this also comes in in this uh, variational free energy uh, function here. And the reason it, where it comes in is that there's a first order multivariate Taylor um, approximation of this f function uh, in the evaluation of the um, integral. And this is really not much understood what, what this is about. Then what we also have in there is the trace operator, which is just the sum of the di diagonal elements of a matrix. So the trace of a matrix is um, the sum of all the diagonal elements. Um, if, I, uh, if A is a matrix, say an N by N matrix, um, these things come in uh, due to um, results on the expectations of multivariate um, Gaussians. Um, so, as you can see, there is a, a fairly long derivation of this. Um, and I actually don't want to go into the details of that now, um, but rather focus on how this fairly long variational free energy function is then maximized um, with respect to um, the variational parameters. Because this is something that happens all the time when people use SPM, and this is something that happens all the time when people talk about the free energy principle. Yeah? So the, this function originally appeared in a paper by Carl Fristen in uh, 2007. There was hardly any derivation in that. Um, so this derivation that you find um, in the script, this is actually what I um, yeah, came up with uh, after studying this for some months. Um, so you still find hardly any um, derivations for that. Uh, the important thing in the derivation is not so much, um, from my perspective, whether each detail is correct, but the question is, um, I mean, I hope that most uh, details are correct, but the question is what kind of assumptions actually go into this uh, derivation. And the important thing that goes in is this um, Taylor approximation of this nonlinear function, which means that this function here, uh, the variation for energy function, that 
I just wrote up here and we now looked at a little bit, is an approximation to the elbow or to the variation of free energy. Yeah? So there are two levels of approx approximation now. First of all, the free energy or the elbow um, approximates the log marginal likelihood, but then also the uh, free energy function itself is only approximated. Yeah? So there is no guarantee that the variation of energy function actually um, represents the actual free energy correctly, which in turn also only approximates the um, um, log marginal likelihood. So this is something to be aware of whenever you hear uh, that um, free energy is all awesome and uh, the SPM is all awesome. Yeah? So it's not. The question is how big the uh, approximation errors are. And this would be a question for mathematical analysis. And you all invited, all of you who are here to do a master thesis on this so that we know. But I know you will not. You will go somewhere and click a toolbox and uh, talk about social neuroscience. And so I'll be here next year again and say we don't know because nobody ever works on that. <laughs> and I cannot do everything all the time. I already had to come up with this whole derivation of this thing so that it's at least to me clear where, the, where, where this whole thing is coming from. It's horrible. People want to do fancy cool stuff, not tedious stuff. Anyway, um, there was a question. Um, yes, actually, it's a basic one um, regarding um, yeah, what you wrote in the part above. Um, because um, yeah, what we get out of the free energy um, function is a real number, right? Yeah. So what we're trying is to find that qx, so that um, distribution that we have already fixed this form, but we are trying to find that one that gives, that outputs the highest number. But in the end, we don't do anything with the number, we just need needed to define the maximum. Yeah, uh, very good. Yeah, almost. Um, so um, we are looking for the maximum, um, like in maximum likelihood of the um, free energy uh, function with uh, respect to these variation parameters. How exactly? Um, we will have a look at in a second. Um, we are interested in the values of the variational parameters, so the mx and sx that maximize it, that's correct. But we also do something with uh, the number, um, so because you said we don't do anything with the number, um, because with this number, this would be the um, uh, free energy function with the parameters that maximize it, and this is what we use to approximate the log marginal likelihood. Yeah? So remember that. Um, our Qx will be, like you said, our posterior uh, approximation and our Fqx, so actually the free energy value, will be our approximation to the uh, marginal likelihood. So we do something with that value. So whenever you see a DCM paper, uh, in the end they report free energies and they um, do model comparison using the free energies or the elbows. Yeah, so the evidence lower bounds. Okay, and the, 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 um, in contrast to the fixed form uh, variational inference, where we already know. No, no, this was a fixed yeah, form. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, my question is referring to the uh, free form. Free form. Um, there, just by means of the theorem that we apply, the functional form emerges. Exactly. Um, which sounds maybe a little bit esoteric, but if you look into the derivations of this example, this actually happens because at one point um, you use the completing the square theorem, or at the other uh, point one sees that it's actually a gamma function. So it actually uh, happens. And so then in the, in the free form, we don't know what function to put into that functional. To get the we yeah, so we don't know, but we also um, don't want to know. So um, so the fixed form approach is to say, yeah, whatever. Let's just assume it's a Gaussian, and then uh, use the whole thing in terms of um, um, function or maximization with respect to numbers. And the free form is a little bit more where this whole thing started from. Um, that. Um, 
um, said, okay, let's not assume a given form for the variation distribution. Let's just see what happens. And that works as long as something can happen because it's relatively mathematically doable, tedious, but doable. Um, and in this case, if you, for example, would now plug in as a function, um, oh, well, no, uh, f uh, yeah, no, still, if you would, for example, plug in for the f, the DCM function, and then somehow hope that now magically, like in the little example for free form, the uh, functional form of the variational distribution would fall out, you need a lot of hope and a lot of time to actually do these tedious calculations, or you use some symbolic math uh, approach on a computer. So the free form, so then we can also say it differently in a way. So the free form is more like a didactic toy example kind of thing to explain the history of this. And the fixed form is more the applied, yeah, let's use this. Let's just assume the posterior is, or we, we just approximate the posterior with a Gaussian, regardless of whether that's meaningful or not. Let's just do it. We want to find um, um, the parameters of the variational distributions, the maximums, uh, the um, elbow, and we want to have the free energy or elbow value to do the log marginal likelihood. So it's more the, it's, it's much more the pragmatic. Let's do something, let's use this, uh, rather than, ah, let's think for a long time and do some uh, uh, TS math approach. Yeah. Yeah, but, of course, important questions from the general uh, perspective on this. So the uh, last thing then um, that we will be able to talk about today is now how to um, maximize um, this function. So um, the thing is that this is a function of an m uh, sorry of an, yeah, of an m dimensional expectation parameter and a covariance matrix yeah so yeah, that's uh, what do we want to do i don't know this is an um, m dimensional entity and this is an m times m dimensional entity which is also positive definite so these are also not, this is also not a, what I'm trying to say in the script, this is also not the sim most simple function that you can think of, right? So simple function that you can think of is x square, where x is a, a real number. There you know how to uh, find the maximum, you do the derivative um, to x, set it to zero, and uh, solve um, for x, and then you find that x, uh, so um, the location of the minimum uh, in this case is uh, zero. Here we have a function that is a, a function, first of all, of, a, of two things. First of all, uh, um, m dimensional vector, so you are put into vector calculus, so you need, if you want to do anything, you need to compute derivatives with respect to vectors. The more, uh, even more uh, complex thing is that the other argument is constrained by the fact that it needs to be a um, positive definite matrix, so you need to, if you compute the derivative, you someone need to make sure that what you uh, get out as a solution is a positive definite matrix because only these are um, specified as input arguments. So this is all not trivial and it uh, needs um, multivariate calculus and um, there are good books on multivariate calculus. Um, so, uh, and one can study them. Um, the way it was done in the um, new imaging literature and also how I present it here is, is again more a pragmatic and suggestive approach um, that um, works essentially by um, yeah, computing the partial derivative of this function with respect to um, the arguments and then uh, see what's happening. And um, the way this is approached in the uh, new imaging literature is um, that the maximization um, with respect to uh, Sx uh, is analytical. So here what actually happens is that the partial derivative with respect to Sx of this uh, function is evaluated 
um, and set to zero and um, SX is then computed to be or um, numerically and uh, not numerically sorry analytically evaluated to be this so again we have our Jacobian Um, so this uh, essentially follows by computing the derivative, setting to zero, and evaluating for um, the argument that uh, maximizes it. Um, so that's how the, um, the maximization with respect to Sx uh, comes about. The other question is how the maximization with respect to the um, um, variational expectation comes about. And um, this is um, actually done using a gradient ascent. Now this is what you all have been waiting for because it finally has to do something with neural networks and you all love neural networks because Radek tells you all the time that neural networks are the shit. Um, no, he doesn't. Uh, <laughs> okay, then not. Thought that's what they do. Um, so, um, here the maximization with respect to um, the variation of uh, expectation parameter, which is, of course, also the more interesting parameter because it's the point estimate for the parameters in the end, uh, is happening via. Um, gradient ascent, which is a um, um, numerical approach. So why, yeah, uh, just to make this clear again, our mx um, that we are trying to uh, um, find is computed numerically, so there are many, uh, there's an algorithm that computes this, and in the end, um, when it's converged, um, let's say at the kth iteration, this um, serves as our uh, point estimate for x. Yeah, and um, because that's the um, expectation parameter of the variation distribution, which is our approximation to the posterior distribution. So if you have this whole thing in one D again, um, just to get this point across, you at one point have m x. K, and what you have here is the variational distribution, which is the approximation to the posterior, which means that um, because this is the expectation, so this is your best guess in terms of the posterior distribution, that these things, for example, if they include the A matrix or the B matrix or the C matrix in uh, DCM, the expectation parameter of the variational distribution, this is the point estimate of these parameters that you're interested in. Yeah? So if, for example, A is the baseline connectivity or B is um, the um, connectivity that you get in addition to some baseline um, connectivity, then it's the values that uh, come out as the variational expectation um, that are used for saying there is some positive coupling between these two areas or something like this. So this is why this um, variational expectation parameter is quite um, important. And um, the way it is estimated um, is as follows. Or it can essentially, or the simplest way to do that, let's say, is uh, to use a gradient um, ascent um, so to use an algorithm that uses as the k plus 1 iteration and a value of mx at k plus the gradient of the free energy function at the location mxk. So this is um, the previous iterant. Um, 
our previous value. And of course, you need to initialize this. So at one point, you have to just specify some value, for example, all zeros. That's the usual thing to initialize things. Or yeah, set it to the prior if there is something that is non-zero uh, in. But um, then you have initialized it. And then you need to com evaluate um, the gradient of the uh, free energy function. Of free energy um, at uh, this previous value, and the gradient, which is the vector of um, first um, derivatives. So just let's put it here. So the gradient of such a function is just. Um, XM. The gradient is also the direction of a steepest ascent in the parameter space. This is not something that is immediately clear, so actually to prove that this is actually mathematically a bit intricate, but um, the thing is Again, if you have proven that, then it doesn't change the fact that it is. So by adding to some previous value the direction of steepest uh, ascent, um, we increase or one can uh, increase the value of um, f. And the question is uh, how much one goes into the direction of steepest uh, uh, ascent. And this is... Um, regulated by this um, step size parameter or you can also call the learning rate if you want. And um, using this kind of um, gradient ascent algorithm, one can find uh, at least a local maximum of the um, free energy function, namely at a location, oops, mx, where the gradient then is uh, zero, so the m dimension is zero vector, um, because at a location of a maximum, um, the gradient, like the first derivative, um, is zero. So this is a very basic um, means to maximize the variation free energy function with respect to the expectation parameter. Um, what's actually happening, which is also nice, is um, that the gradient here um, in terms of the free energy is also only approximated. So we don't reach the real gradient, but only an approximation uh, to it, which raw makes things uh, simpler, but maybe not in more correct. Um, in one of our papers, I um, try to push that a little bit into a more um, standard direction in terms of nonlinear optimization. This is where this globalized Newton method comes in. It's really not that uh, important in terms of uh, for anything. It's just a better uh, um, algorithm um, in the sense that it's uh, understood uh, better and it's also more conventional. In the end, what actually SPM does um, is also not using gradient ascent, but using this local linearization uh, gradient ascent algorithm, which is even yeah, that's that's even more idiosyncratic and funky uh, than anything else, and even less understood uh, what this actually does. But that's uh, what is used and what is also um, uh, documented um, in the um, uh, script. The reason that this is being used relates to the fact that uh, um, Carl Friston wanted to have an algorithm that can also be 
um, interpreted from a dynamical system perspective because this was all when uh, he was kind of developing the free energy principle and um, the methods that are uh, um, used in SPM for estimating models in parallel. And hence there's some crosstalk between these two things. But one has to say these are not the most um, conventional approaches to function uh, maximization. So it's all a little bit idiosyncratic, a little bit funky, a little bit weird. Um, yeah. Uh, but these are the two methods that are used for maximizing this function. So first analytically with respect to the variational um, uh, covariance matrix and numerically with respect to the variational um, expectation parameter. Now, we are almost at the end for today. There are two things that we can do next time. We can go into the mathematical derivation of the free energy function or we can look at how this is applied uh, in the free energy principle and how this maps onto neural architectures. So, or how it's supposed to map onto neural architectures and explain how the brain works. So the question is, what do you want? Do you want mathematical detail next time or do you want to have kind of a fluffy but awesome and uh, a spannend uh, 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 theory of how this works in the brain. I don't mind either. Or. So who's for the first mathematical details? Who's for the fluffy thing? Good, that's what I wanted. Um, <laughs> but then um, you should also, if you have the feeling that you're not quite sure what this is about, this is due to the fact that we didn't go through the mathematical details. If you want to really, if you don't, if you want to get rid of this feeling that you're not quite sure where the, these things are coming from, you have to go through the mathematical details. Then you know where they're coming from. But uh, I'm actually, I think for actually for for looking uh, for for presenting stuff here, it's definitely easier to go over the more fluffy neural architecture business than to mathematical details, which you better do on your own today. So that was a question. Can we um, find mathematical details? Yeah, yeah, it's all in the script. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, it's all in the script. Um, so the. Um, so the way I've um, written, I don't know whether you studied it uh, already, but um, the way this whole part is written is that there's always the result first and then there's derivation or proof. And um, on first reading, like in any mathematical text, I would recommend to skip the proofs and the derivations. This is what we've done basically now. Um, but then you always have the problem that you're not quite sure why uh, one thing followed from the other, and then you can look into the derivation. So the derivation that I mean is um, computing this free energy integral um, so that you get this free energy function, which you find in the literature, you find it in every postdoc paper from the fill group, uh, where they just put it there and say, that's clear, or maybe not even put it there. Um, and then you don't know what this paper is about anyway. So this is this uh, relatively long derivation of 1571 in my thing and thing. And the other thing is the little bit more or a little bit shorter derivation of the um, variational uh, covariance parameter, which is proof of 1588. And then these algorithms, um, there's actually not much more to be said about them. So the uh, gradient ascent we talked about. I have a chapter on nonlinear optimization, but I will not finish this um, before the end of the term, and it's also it will not help you. And um, the only thing that you, um, I think by now, have heard many times is gradient ascent, and the only thing that happens is that you add the gradient of the um, function at its current location to the parameter, to the current parameter, and then you hope for the best. Yeah? So then next time we, um, I will then present how some people then think how this maps onto neurons in the brain and uh, give another example um, um, system. Um, so that we might 
rehearse this whole thing a little bit more. But that's how it is. Yeah, good. Any other questions? No. Then let's have a break and see who else.